There are times in your adventure that you're going to have to provide for yourself or maybe your party. You might have to track a creature through the city or the wilderness. You might need to know just which direction to go. So you need to know which way is north, south, east, or west. Or you might need to cover your own tracks if you're being pursued. Well, if that's the case, the survival skill might be exactly what you're looking for. My name is Don, and I'm trying to be the Sly Strategist. And let's go ahead and talk about it. Now, survival is a wisdom-based skill, so that's what you really need to key on in order for to use survival, and it allows you to kind of do what it says on the tin. It allows you to survive. Um, it does provide two untrained actions, and that would be subsist and sense direction, and then it also provides you for two trained actions, and that would be track and two cover tracks. It doesn't provide any specific actions during an encounter. In other words, there's nothing from survival that is going to take an action, but it is possible that during an encounter, you might have to do a survival check. So it does come in handy at times. With that, let's go ahead and talk about the untrained actions. Now, our first untrained action we're going to do is we're going to talk about subsist. Now, when I say untrained, I don't necessarily mean that being trained in survival isn't helpful. It will increase your role, basically. It'll, it'll give you more proficiency in the survival skill, so you'll do better on it. However, you can subsist whether you are trained in survival or not. Now, subsist is not something glamorous at all. Uh, there's a table that we'll go ahead and put up, but it is a... Uh, basically surviving on the equivalent of four silver pieces a week or two gold pieces a month or 24 gold pieces a year. So it allows you basically to survive at a minimum level, but there aren't any hindrances to you because you are subsisting. So it is a downtime activity. It allows you to provide for food and shelter and Generally in the wilderness, if you're going to be doing this in the city, you're going to be doing society checks. So it is mainly something you're going to do when you're outside of civilization. So as mentioned, you are trying to provide for food and shelter for yourself and possibly your party. The GM is going to determine the DC that you need in order to do the subsist action. So it isn't a flat check. It is, it's dependent upon what's going on. Maybe somewhere in the desert or in the Arctic might be harder to do than if you were in the woods or some type of river delta or something where things to exist on would be more prevalent. Or mentioning the desert or the Arctic, temperature could be involved. So providing housing could be harder depending on the area. So once again, it is not a flat check. It is something that is dependent upon where you are, what's available to you, and also, once again, your proficiency. There are basically the four levels of success that you can have when you are doing a check for this. So on a critical success, you provide a sustenance, substance living for yourself and one additional creature or you can improve your own food or shelter, um, granting yourself a slightly more comfortable living. Once again, you could look at that table and comfortable is the equivalent of one gold piece a day or four gold pieces for a month or 52 gold pieces a year. So basically sort of almost doubling or greater than doubling the amount of comfort you have by how you are living with a success you do find enough food and shelter in order to protect yourself from the elements and to provide you with the nutrients you need so that you are not hurt in any way by living in these conditions. On a failure, you are exposed to the elements and you don't get enough food. And what this means is you will become fatigued. So you will have the fatigue condition on you until you do attain sufficient food and shelter, but you don't get a penalty to your roles to subsist with a failure. However, with a critical failure, not only do you fail, 
but you could do something along the lines of attract trouble or eat something you weren't supposed to, maybe that's poisonous or that's rotten, or something along those lines that is going to make your situation worse, and you are going to take a negative two circumstance penalty to any further checks for a week, then that is the minimum for that negative two check to subsist for one whole week. You don't find any food at all. So once again, you are fatigued. And if you don't have anything starved up, then after a certain period of time, it isn't specifically stated, but after a certain period of time, you are going to be in danger of starving or dying of thirst if you don't eventually succeed at a subsist role. So the continual failing is going to make it worse. And because of that negative two circumstance penalty, it is going to be easier to critical fail, which will lower it down another two. So this will stack as you kind of go along. Now there are some sample subsistence um, tasks. So if you are untrained, basically the best place or the worst place that you can subsist is in a lush forest. Calm weather, no extreme temperatures, no extreme rain, no flooding, and there's plentiful resources around. If you are trained, then you can basically subsist in a, think of like a prairie, hillsides, uh, small villages. So you can subsist in those areas without spending any money whatsoever. If you are an expert, then you can subsist in mountainous regions or a really remote location, like a really small hamlet that is nowhere around anything else and typically has harsher conditions outside. If you are a master, then you can subsist in those deserts. Or if a city was under siege by an occupying force, then you could subsist in those type of conditions. And legendary, legendary, you can subsist pretty much anywhere, barren wastelands, um, undead areas, uh, places where there is no seeming life, you can still somehow manage to eke out a living if you have legendary status. So it's a fantastic skill that can provide for you and potentially some members of your party as long as you continue making your good rolls. With that, we're going to move on to our second untrained activity, which is sense direction. So with the second untrained activity, Sense Direction, you can use things like the stars or the position of the sun as it goes through the sky. So you might be able to tell which way is east or west. Maybe the geography, maybe things that you can see in the distance could be able to help you. Uh, the behavior of flora or fauna, it allows you to stay oriented in the wild. Typically, you would do the survival check once per day. However, your GM, because of the environment, the conditions, other various things could allow you to roll more often. The GM is going to determine the DC that you need to make based on the conditions. So once again, this is not a flat check either. It really is dependent upon what you're around. If you're in a big, flat, barren desert, it's going to be very hard for you to sense direction. Whereas once again, if you are in a place that has plenty of landmarks, clear skies, but it's pleasant. You can see the sunrise, you can see the sunset, you have an open view to the sky. Those kind of things will allow you to have a easier DC for your sense of direction. Uh, more unusual locales or places that you're unfamiliar with might give you a penalty or make, make the DC harder, depending on how the GM would like to do it. And if you do not have a compass with you, then you will take a, a negative two item penalty to your sense direction skill. Now there are basically two conditions for this, uh, for success. Three, because there is a failure. You can fail. If you fail though, you just fail. There is no critical failure. However, if you do have a critical success, you get an excellent sense of where you are. And if you're in an environment with cardinal directions, in other words, you're not on a different plane or something along those lines, um, you know them exactly. On a success, you will gain enough to orient yourself to avoid becoming incredibly and hopelessly lost. Um, if you're in, in an environment with cardinal directions, you will have a sense of those directions, but not exact. 
So then there are the sense direction tasks. Once again, this is an untrained task, but the more training you have, the better you are at it, basically. So if you are untrained, you can determine a cardinal direction using the sun, basically would be a good example of what you could do if you are untrained. If you are trained, you can find a path in a forest, if you know which way it was supposed to be going. Uh, if you're an expert, you can think of it as maybe you're able to navigate a hedge maze or a corn maze, maze because of your excellent sense of direction. So you won't get lost in those particular type of things. If you are a master, you might be able to uh, navigate a labyrinth or uh, a relatively featureless desert without losing your way. And if you are legendary, legendary in the skill, you can navigate, the, the example is an ever-changing dreamscape. So planes that make it hard to do this type of navigation, uh, areas that there's just no landmarks whatsoever. If you're legendary, then you have a chance to be able to do sense direction. Now with those two untrained actions, let's go ahead and talk about the two trained actions that you can do. So the first of the trained actions we're going to talk about is cover tracks. And with cover tracks, you kind of do what it says, which is you cover your own tracks, but you move half of your travel speed. Um, I'll go ahead and put that up over here, what the average travel speeds are in that way to be easier for you to, to have those when you're doing it. You don't need to attempt a survival check when you're covering your tracks, but if someone is tracking you, then they need to be the ones that attempt a survival check against your survival DC. So although you're not rolling, they need to do better than what your survival DC is if you're trying to cover your tracks. If it's higher than the normal DC to track. So in the track action, if they have to roll the DC, if your survival DC is higher, then that's what they would roll against is your higher survival DC. With that, we're going to go ahead and go into our second trained action, which is the track action. So the second trained action is the track action. You follow the tracks, you're moving at half speed. And once again, we'll go ahead and we'll put that, that up, up there so you can kind of have those, those results so you know what you're going to be doing. So after a successful check, you will continue to follow these tracks at half your speed for an hour. And you're going to have to make this check every hour of movement speed. Um, or not necessarily movement speed, but you're going to be doing it every hour of game time. My apologies. In this downtime activity. And if you do happen to track into an encounter, the GM might decide you have to continue to roll more often as you're in this encounter in order to keep the track up. And the GM is the one who's going to be determining how often you need to track. Uh, so you are going to attempt your survival check once you start, once every hour, unless there are significant changes in the trail or the circumstances on which you're going, in which case the GM might decide that you need to track more often, or he might change the DC depending on if you're moving through different terrain or there are things that are making it harder for you to track. Things like this might be you went from a nice loamy soil that's soft and you can see the tracks into a desert where the sand is always caving in on itself and the tracks seem to be going away. Or it could be raining and could be washing away the top layer of mud, making it harder and harder for you to see these tracks. So there are conditions on this so you can succeed on it, which means you find the trail and you can go ahead and track. You can follow the one that you're already following. If you fail, you lose the track and you can try again to find it with a one hour delay. Now, once again, that might change the DC that you need to track. It isn't specifically stated in the rules, but if you think about it as you're, you know, in a, in a play environment, if it was raining outside or if it's really windy and you're in a sandy area, the DC could raise during that one hour. And then if you critically fail, you lose the trail and you can't try again for a full 24 hours, which once again might make that DC even higher because a full 24 hours have made that trail go cold. So keep that in mind when you're doing your roll. Now there are some sample 
tracking tasks they have for the various levels of proficiency. So we'll cover those real quick. So if you're untrained, then you can pretty much only follow really large groups of people or monsters or something along those lines, but you're basically, you can track an army of movement. So it's not a person, it's not an individual creature, but you could track masses of people or creatures moving, and that would be the best that you could track. So that's why it doesn't really fit in the untrained category. In trained, you can relatively, fresh tracks are easy for you to follow, but it has to be obvious. Think of like a rampaging beast or a bear or something along those lines going through the woods, breaking off limbs, disturbing the undergrowth, uh, leaving big obvious paw prints in the ground. That's what you can do with a trained. Uh, with an expert, you can follow a n nimble panther's tracks through the woods so they have less damage to the undergrowth, less damage to branches, lighter tracks that don't hit quite as hard into the ground surface. So that's what you could do with an expert training. With master training, track things that are obscured by snow or sand or things covering. You can follow tracks of smaller creatures like mice or guinea pigs or hamsters or something really small, things that you can track. And you can track things that are left on surfaces that don't necessarily hold prints. So you could think of this almost as you can follow the hint of the trail once you have the master skill. Now with legendary, you can track old tracks that have been laid well into the past through a windy desert sands or tracks that have been totally obscured by a major blizzard behind, beneath feet of snow or things that have been, the example in the book is if the tracks have been through a hurricane that you can track through that. Now, I hope this explanation of survival kind of gave you some ideas of stuff you can do with it when you're playing your game, um, made you think about it a different way, or like I said, I always hope that you learn something new when you're watching these videos. So we're going to go ahead and leave it at that. So feel free to like, subscribe, or hit the notification bell if you'd like. But regardless of what you do, I hope you have a good day and happy adventuring. Thanks.